Hey guys, Mo here. I built a 7th gen, thin iPod Classic from scratch from parts I had either lying around for a significant number of years or had purchased for this build specifically, such as the back case. Now the total was around about $250 and 100% it was worth it, but that's just for me. Inside this iPod is about 500 gig of storage, a 3000 milliamp per hour battery. The battery provides me a combination of watch and listening time of 52 hours. This includes watching movies and TV shows and listening to music and podcasts. And it also includes a total of standby time for the test being 188 hours. Now you're wondering, why did I build this? What in the goddamn crazy insanity did I build this? Just so I could watch movies and TV shows at work or even listen to music and podcasts, again, at work. Now, due to a strict security environment at work, we're not allowed to have our smartphones on us, and at the same time, I want to be able to control what I want to listen to. To have something in my hand and not be stuck on a playlist. I also don't want to get bored to what I'm listening to and would like to watch something occasionally. Now here is my giant box of iPod parts that I've collected over the years. It's mostly either the parts for the iPod Classic, iPod Video, and the iPod Mini. Now this is the SD card I'll be using. It's a 512 gigabyte Samsung Evo Plus. I do have my hands on a Belkin Remix case for the iPod Classic as I want to keep the iPod Classic as scratch free as possible. I decided to use this iPod Classic front panel and chassis for the parts for my project. I will be removing the main board as it is fried. To build a thin iPod Classic and at the same time implement a 3000 milliamp per hour battery, I have to use the iFlash Quad Micro in order to keep the thickness down enough for the thin case. The battery and dock bezel are both from EOE Works. Great customer service, I recommend. The one on the left is the genuine iPod Classic front panel while the one on the right is the aftermarket one. You can clearly see that the genuine one, despite being left unprotected in a box of parts for a number of years, is in way better condition compared to the one on the right, which was left in the box again unprotected for a month. So obviously I'll be using the one in better condition. Now this is the 7th gen iPod Classic mainboard, the MVP. I purchased it off EOE Works for about 100 USD. I believe it has the best stack, most amount of RAM possible, and it does not have a storage limitation, but it has a 5000 track limitation. Hopefully I do not hit that limitation. I separated the components that were attached to the chassis frame, since I wanted to build it from the ground up to ensure each component works. Now time to unpack and install the main board to the chassis. The board looked clean, brand new, same old display. I put down a microfiber cloth in order to protect the screen. Note, first attach the click wheel before you screw down the board. I forgot to do that and I wasted a bit of time. I attached the battery next to ensure the board booted. I properly cleaned the screen with a microfiber cloth and attached the faceplate. I attached the iFlash quad next and it had inserted the SD card prior. Now I'm cutting a bit of the plastic from an old lunch bag to ensure that there's no shorting between, uh, let's say the chassis and the circuitry. I also did another boot check to ensure that it actually boots up. I had also at this time formatted the iPod with iTunes and put some music on it just to see if it functions. Now it's time to put it all together. Putting in the battery was kind of tricky, making sure the cable is arranged properly and not interfering. It's also important to ensure that the battery and the iFlash stay as close to the dock as possible to ensure that both of them don't go past a little notch of the chassis frame. I properly cleaned the screen with a microfiber cloth and attached the faceplate. Now I'm doing the old final checkup to ensure everything works. Everything seemed fine. I ended up cleaning the old Belkin case I found in the box of spare parts. I wanted to prolong the iPod's life and its physical appearance, but at some point the songs were able to be still be detected, but they would not load up. So when I rebooted the iPod, I ended up getting the Red Cross error. So I took it apart, which was annoying because I was worried about accidentally damaging the back housing. I completely reset the SD card and the iFlash and it all started to work again. I then again closed it up, gave it a quick shake to ensure that the SD card and the iFlash is still connected and will be connected properly and will not get loose again because I'm not opening this thing ever again. And here we are, a 500 gig iPod Classic. Yes, I know it's technically around like 480 gig of storage, but it's still huge. I don't even think I'll fill it up completely. That is why I went with the 500 gig SD card instead of the one terabyte. The battery life is amazing, a major positive. As mentioned before, the battery has provided me at least with a combination of watch and listening time of 52 hours. This includes watching movies, 
TV show, then listen to music and podcasts. Combining that with the total standby time for the test being 188 hours. And it will still have a charge. A tiny sliver of a charge according to the battery icon on the iPod, but still charge nonetheless. I tend to use the iPod Classic for about 350 minutes each day. Well, technically each work day, which remains in standby mode whenever it's not being used. I do not turn it off. I have yet to experience that iPod running out of charge because every two weeks I connect the iPod to my PC, run iTunes to transfer some podcast music, movies, TV shows, etc. It's bloody amazing. Now for me, the main con is the need for PC and iTunes in order to add additional content from iTunes. However, I should be lucky that Apple continues to allow iPod devices like this classic, minis and so forth, access to the Apple library, allowing me to add podcasts to the devices or buy and add music and so forth. I'm also glad that I'm able to add my own media onto the device through iTunes. For example, I started downloading full Twitch streams and adding them onto my iPod. In reality, outside of work, I have no time to watch a complete eight hour Twitch stream such as Sea Dog's Bikeathons. Now this leads on to my next con, that I can't simply drag and drop visual media such as movies and TV TV shows onto the iPod. In order for the videos to work correctly is that I have to do a conversion in order to convert the video to the correct format, resolution and codec by using Handbrake which does take up a lot of valuable time. Another con may be the device is old from let's say 2009, making it roughly 15 years old, and it contains obsolete technology such as low res screen, old iPod connector, however they do not affect me the slightest. Another con may be the lack of Bluetooth, in return no Bluetooth audio, however there are mods that people have done to add Bluetooth to these devices. You can find out more on the iPod subreddit. But for me, the lack of Bluetooth doesn't really affect me at all due to the fact that I prefer to listen via cable headphones. It looks great, looks brand new, and now I can sneakily watch and listen to stuff at work. <laughs> now here it is with the Balkan case. The Balkan case is a bit banged up, but I don't mind as long as it protects my iPod. Overall, it was a fun and positive project. Devs worth it since I actually finished this project up in June last year, and I've been using it every day at work. It's amazing, and I'm really happy with it. I don't think I'll change anything I've done to it so far. It it is quite an expensive project. I only recommend it if you actually enjoy tinkering and diagnosing problems and will actually utilize the iPod afterwards because for certain projects that I've done over the years, I was more interested in the mod itself than actually using the device after it was modified. But I'm glad that I'm actually utilizing this iPod every day at work because I needed a device that I could use at work and it just perfectly fits my needs and wants. You gotta be a real Apple fan for this project. There are also tons of mods that people have done to these over the years, which you can find out more about on the iPod subreddit. Finally, I'll try to do better with my video upload frequency, but for me, it takes a huge chunk of my time. Like I can't really sit down and concentrate on one certain thing. I do enjoy creating content, putting my work out there, and I will do better. Share, like, comment, follow me on the social media platform. I'm always active on them. See ya. Thanks for watching.